Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you how I paint one of my Bee Snagger boys. So uh, I start off with a model that's been primed using the white scar spray and then I've decided to do something a little bit different because uh, usually for the skin I just go with the warp lightning contrast paint and uh, which is a very bright green color. Um, but I've been watching a couple of videos about painting and so I thought maybe I should try something a little bit more elaborate. So I start off with a base coating of a paint called Sword Hilt Burgundy, which is from the Duncan Rhodes paints. Uh, and a lot of the paints I'm using here are from that paint set. Um, and I gotta say, they're really, really cool paints. They're very smooth and very, very nice to work with. And the reason I have chosen a burgundy color as the base color is because that is going to be um, sort of the basis for my shadows and shadows that are a contrasting color to the main main colors and the highlights um, often will work a little bit better and give you a more sort of um, a more visually interesting uh, look instead of just using black or desaturated greens for instance as, as shadows. Uh, I've never tried this before so this is sort of a uh, Sort of an experiment, I just thought it would be fun um, to see what I, well, how, I, how I like painting like that. It, it looks weird at this stage, I'll definitely grant you that. Then for the pants that I'm going to be painting yellow, I decided to do an undercoat of a, a light brown color. This is called Fur Cloak, also from the Duncan paints. Um, I usually just chunk on a bit of uh, Yandan yellow contrast paint and let that be it. Um, but I thought, well, why not try and see if, uh, well, if it works out differently, if I like this better, if it sort of gets me a smoother coat of paint. Then I work a little bit more on the skin and I just mix in a little bit of grey with the original burgundy color just to sort of desaturate the shadows just a tiny bit. Um, so right now I have an, uh, a very purple pinkish orc with grey shadows. And at this stage, as I said, I've never tried painting like this before. So at this stage, I thought this is never ever going to work out. Um, I kind of, well, I kind of regretted it. But then I thought, okay, if it if it really doesn't work out, I can just strip the model, as I always say on my on my channel. If if you really hate it, just strip it or just reprime it. Then I got into actually painting some green, and I chose an emerald green, which is sort of a darkish mid-tone green um, also from the Duncan Rhodes paint set and I painted that more or less over the entire model just leaving slight touches of the burgundy underneath um, because I want this I want the skin to be very bright so that he'll sort of match my uh, my other orcs then I took a mixture of the base coat green and then I mixed that with another green which is called ethereal green also from the Duncan Road set and I went back and forth with this a couple of times I think I did I don't know two or three layers um, uh, each time so this was uh, well relatively time consuming but it was actually quite fun to just try painting something different. And uh, here I go over it just with the uh, emerald green on its own because that is actually what I want to be uh, the most prominent green color. Then I mix in a little bit of my fluor paint. I have the fluorescent paints from Huge Miniatures. This one is called Starfire Yellow, so a very poppy neon, um, neon uh, yellow co color. And I mix that with the ethereal green. Just a slight touch of the of the fluorescent paint and I don't know 90% of it is still the uh, the ethereal green. I just uh, wanted to build up the layers slowly. Um, at this stage I could see that this was going to be taking quite a while but now I had sort of committed to the uh, to the challenge so uh, I thought I might have, I might as well see it through and actually do some nice uh, subtle layers and stuff and try to get it as smooth as I could without actually going crazy. So I just uh, slowly mixed in more and more of the Starfire Yellow in, in the mix and, uh, and really try to be try to be patient and try to make it look, well, sort of realistic. I mean, neon green skin is never really going to look especially realistic, but I think I think you get the idea. And then uh, lastly, I just used pure uh, Starfire Yellow as the final highlights. And uh, after I had done that, uh, 
and I'm this is not the uh, I, I forgot to tape it <laughs> I forgot to video film it um but then I gave it a gave it uh, the whole model a glaze of the um, the contrast paint called is striking scorpion green uh, and after I'd done that I went slowly back over it with just a touch of the starfire yellow because I, I thought that the model looked a little bit too subtle and I I'm not much for subtlety in my uh, in my miniature painting. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's what I did. Once I was done with the uh, with the skin, I went to the pants and I uh, painted them yellow using a color also from the Duncan set called Yellow Flame, which is a nice vibrant yellow. And I actually think it covers really well, considering that I mean it is. It's not a contrast paint and I'm so used to painting with contrast paints that I expect a yellow paint to cover in one go, but obviously that is not how it usually works. So I think it took me two or three coats to get a nice smooth finish, but then it looked really cool. And then I took a contrast paint called Griff Hound Orange and I used that for shading. And as you can see, I do sort of hash marks here just because, I mean, I could also try doing a really realistic... Um, sort of blend with the yellow pants, but I, that's just not the style I'm going for with my orc. So I do the uh, hash marks instead. Um, and I then decided after I had gone over it with the uh, orange that it needed just a little bit more contrast just to make it pop a little bit more. And so I took another contrast paint and this one is a brown called Snake Bite Leather and I used that in exactly the same way as I used the orange just to deepen the shadows a little bit. Then for the highlights I used Wraithbone which is a citadel color and I again uh, applied hash marks uh, and as you can see here I mostly use them on the top of the model. Again I'm not going for a realistic look here or a naturalistic look or anything um, but I do tend to put the brightest hash, mark, hash marks where, um, well, at the top of, of the model so that's where the light would most realistically come from I guess. Um, but it, it's in no way uh, any uh, sort of attempt at getting this to look like a real cloth or anything. Then I work on the sort of, it's not fur, I think it's supposed to be some sort of scaly hide that they have got on their back. Um, because after all, these are beast snacker boys, so I guess they have murdered some poor beast and, well, used them as a clothing piece. So uh, I uh, used uh, two contrast paints for this and I use uh, Achillean Green which is the darker one and I use Aethermatic Blue which is the lighter one and I just do a really quick wet blend as you can see here. And I apply the darker one at the bottom and then lighter at the top again just to give sort of a quick illusion of uh, shadow and light. Um, you could also just do one of these colors. I just like the look of a wet blended contrast paints on scaly hide. I mean, yeah, it's it's just a thing I have. <laughs> um, and I think contrast paints work really, really well with this. I could also have tried going for like a really smooth undercoat um, with ordinary acrylic paints, but I just think this is exactly what contrast paints are built for. And I just really enjoy working with them, uh, especially on stuff like this. Then I took another contrast paint. This one is called uh, Sigvold Burgundy, which is a nice, rich, uh, dark pinkish tone. And I use that um, to do a, sort of a dark outline between each scale. It's not that easy to see here. It might as well be black for uh, for all the cam video camera really captures. Um, but I thought if I just did black, it would be very... Not very, but a little bit dull perhaps. And so I went with the burgundy because that's a nice contrasting color to the uh, to the bluish greenish turquoise uh, color scheme. Um, and I just thought that would it would look, look nice. Um, but you could definitely go with black or something else if you want to. And then I just do an edge highlight. At the bottom of the scales I used a very light blue. And then at the top of the scales I simply go over it with a pure white. This is the... Uh, Matte white from the Army, paint, Army Painter. Um, if I really want to sort of make the scales uh, perhaps even more visually interesting, I might have gone with a color that was not just pure white, but perhaps 
um, a very, very light yellow or something, because that would also be a contrasting paint. Um, but I want these to match my other, uh, my, my other orcs, and they are all, they all have these highlights with just pure white. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's what I just settled on. And then for the shoulder piece and the sort of banner he's got on his back, I decided I needed some very, very bright colors to make everything pop. And so I went to one of my favorite contrast paints, which is a Volopus Pink. And I just applied that, as you can see here, over a white base coat. Um, as you probably know, the contrast paints are not really made for painting on army, on, on armor and, and or other quite smooth surfaces. Uh, so they tend to pool a little bit and do not really make an even nice coat. But I don't really mind because I'm going to be covering the entire surface with my um, with my hash marks anyway, so it doesn't matter at all. And for the other part of the shoulder piece, I also use a contrast paint. This one is a blue one that is called Talisar Blue, which is just a nice, rich, vibrant blue uh, that I tend to incorporate into more or less every single color scheme I do. And then I decided the eyes, I mean, it's sort of a stylized beastie face that's on his shoulder plate. I decided that the eyes needed to be a a color that would contrast nice both nicely both with the pink and blue and so I went for orange and the the orange I chose is also a contrast paint and this is called Griffhound Orange and uh, again one of my favorite contrast paints it's not quite as vibrant as the newer uh, Magma Droth Flame but I really uh, really like it and I'm afraid the camera is a little bit out of focus here but it is also some very tiny stuff I'm trying to show here but I do hash marks again here on the banner uh, and I use um, I use the Achillean green, uh, the same one as I used for the uh, for for the uh, sort of beast hide mantle thing he's wearing. And I just do very tiny cross hatches, as you can see here, uh, with just quick, just really nice quick strokes with the with the brush uh, to make uh, to make them sort of nice and, and easy to tell apart. Then I grab another fluorescent paint from Huge Miniatures. This one is called Pulse Wave Pink, and I use that to do a nice uh, crisp edge highlight all around the uh, face of the banner. Um, and I then go back over it with another um, fluorescent paint from Huge Miniatures, and this one is called Cyber Pink. And each time I do I tend to just paint a little bit less than before, so you get a sort of nice buildup of layers where you have uh, you have the darker layers with the shadows, with the Achillean with the Achillean green, and then you have the darker pink, the lighter pink, and then lastly a just a little touch of uh, of pure white, and um, just to make sure that everything really pops and stands out, and that you are able to see exactly what. Um, what I'm sort of going for with this uh, sort of painting style. I really try to make the brush strokes easy to see, as you can also see here on the final picture of the model. Um, because it, I, I've i noticed if they get too small and too difficult to tell apart, it just looks, to my eyes at least, a little bit muddy. And uh, so they can't be too small or too delicate. You really need to be able to, to, to sort of see each individual line, otherwise it doesn't really work as well, I find. Um, you know, your your opinion may, of course, be very different, and you could definitely also use this to do something that was extremely delicate and very hard to tell, uh, uh, where you were doing trying to make some really smooth transitions with uh, hash marks that, that might also work. Um, but at least for this kind of, uh, of painting scheme that I'm going for, I like to make them really stand out and very visible. And of course, since I used fluorescent paints, as you could see, the model glows in, under a UV light, which is silly, but fun. And um, so uh, this model took me quite a while to paint, much longer than I normally spend on a single orc model. Um, and that was mainly to do with the fact that I tried to... Um, well, I, I tried working with the skin, making it look more smooth than my usual way of painting orc skin. And also with the pants a little bit, but definitely most of the time was spent on the skin. And I think it actually worked really well. I like it. I think it looks smooth. I think it looks nice. And I think it looks really vibrant. Um, I'm not sure. I think it the amount of time 
I spend on it versus sort of the payoff or like cost benefit analysis. I don't think this is what I'm going to be doing for every single old boy that I'll be painting in the future because that's just too time consuming. And I am painting, um, well, I'm usually not painting for competitions. I'm painting to get models on the tabletop so that I can play with them. So uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing this for every single model, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it was nice trying it. And now I feel a little bit more confident with it and I can uh, definitely see myself um, working a little bit more with skin because I have found that I tend to sort of not choose to paint color, to paint models that have a lot of skin showing just because I'm not really very happy with the way I paint skin. I like the way I can paint texture on on armor plates and texture on cloth and such, but skin has always been sort of a thing that I just tried to avoid <laughs> as as far as I can, which is, uh, I mean, it's kind of silly that I feel limited to choosing certain models instead of others just based on what type of uh, texture they have on them, whether it be leather or cloth or um, armor or fur and stuff so yeah it's uh it was actually really cool trying it out and i will i think i'll uh, work more with it but not perhaps on every single old model so uh, let me know what you think do you like this way of painting green skin do you have any ideas in for other things i might try in the future or other ways you find that uh, painting green skin really works for you i uh, of course i would love to know and also if you have any questions or comments or any sort of thing please also leave a comment in the comment section below. It also helps out the channel and help other people find it as well, which is uh, really appreciated uh, uh, yeah, by me as well. Uh, also remember, if you uh, want to stay up to date on my painting projects, you can follow me as Dyson Demons on Twitter and Instagram. So thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.